Well, I'm not up here tooting my horn when I say this. I'm just laying out the fact that we know what we're talking about. We have been predicting that you will start seeing massively increased attacks on police officers around the United States, but also in Europe and other areas. This is part of the globalist multinational program to undermine stability, national security, uh, local security, as a pretext to force the political capitulation of the local uh, constabulary to the globalist program. And Loretta Lynch at the Justice Department is pushing the Strong Cities Initiative in the last uh, six, seven months that federalizes and globalizes local police. Then they call off the dogs of Black Lives Matter and other groups. I think the best way to break down what's currently happening is this way. And I'm going to do it when we come back after the break in detail. But my personal journey dealing with the police, my personal journey trying to understand uh, what's happening in the last 21 years on air and, of course, before that. But it's this issue. Statistically, police killing people is one of the rarest forms of death. We see a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies that basically exacerbate and hype this up. I'm not defending police when they do bad things. That certainly goes on. But it is a manufactured red herring. When you see the number one issue in this country for like four or five years, Trayvon Martin and then Black Lives Matter, you would think that the world was ending when 258 black Americans get killed by police every year, most of them justifiable shootings. There was a case in Houston last night where a man who was a felon and part of gangs and other things pulled a gun on police in front of witnesses, and the guy's wife talked to the news and said, yeah, he was just waving a gun around, pointing at him, and they shot him. So 258 people that happen to be African descent uh, are killed by the police. Okay, I'm sure some of the time it's wrong. If a cop's found to do it wrong, put him in prison. This isn't about an agenda of defending the police. I saw some comment on InfoWars because I put a video out that's gone viral titled, this, this, this video will bring down Black Lives Matter. And I saw a couple commenters going, okay, what he says is a lot of good points, but you know, he's got an agenda. Before I get into all this news today, we have a special guest joining us in the studio as well. Let me just say right now, I do have an agenda. And that's telling the truth. And that's having integrity. And that's actually trying to learn how this world works and trying to empower myself and others. Because I believe in humanity and I believe in you. And I am too, I guess you could say prideful, to sit here and pick sides in something just because I think it'll further my own personal gain. Because when you have that attitude, you lose the whole storyline of life. I'm trying to empower everybody as long as it's not at my expense. And by my expense, as long as they're not trying to bring me down. Because when you empower others, it basically energizes the whole of the society. As John F. Kennedy said, a rising tide raises all ships. So separating Alex Jones from his narrative, InfoWars is getting six times the traffic Thursday night through right now we have ever had. Previous spikes were three to four times. We're seeing six times the traffic, 10,500 people a second are entering the site. That's how many new IP addresses are coming in a second. Millions of visitors an hour. Very, very exciting things are happening. Because people understand we've been predicting this, we understand what's going on, and I have a guest coming in that's really concerned with his sources and his research that they're gonna try to kill Donald Trump as a false flag to cause a civil war. First get the leftists all hyped up, hype up a bunch of uh, cops killing people, get the media all pushing it, and then right as the summer goes towards its head, its climax, into September, an assassination of Donald Trump. We're going to talk about that with George Humphrey coming up today as well and a lot more. But when we return, police are getting shot in Georgia, in Tennessee, in Florida, in Missouri, uh, in New York, uh, in San Antonio. The police department got shot up. I mean, this, this is serious. My friends, it is Sunday, the 10th day of July, 2016. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Longtime patriot, good friend of mine, former Austin City Council member, a fellow that was involved fighting the New World Order. And I got involved in Pat Buchanan's campaign when I was still in high school. George Humphrey is going to be in studio with us coming up later in the hour. He's got a new book out. He, of course, is also a best-selling author. The book is Life, Love, Joy. 
Now, before we go any further, uh, George is a high-powered businessman, real estate guy, has a lot of big connections to a lot of uh, some of the older families in the United States. Now, I was just talking to him uh, during the uh, pre-show preparation about what insiders are telling him. And uh, he, he says that they really are concerned about Donald Trump's life and that they're concerned that the establishment, that is criminal elements of it, want to start a civil war in this country, and that that would be triggered by the assassination of Donald J. Trump. So we'll be talking about that with him and more coming up at the bottom of the hour. Where to start? I shot a lot of special reports Friday, Saturday, and today, and they're all viral. Some of them have millions of views. And then, of course, the radio show has had six times the traffic to Infowars.com, that, that is the biggest spike in traffic we've ever seen. It's been sustained since Friday right through today. We're getting millions of visitors, new visitors, by the way, most of them, every hour. It's, it's epic. Uh, I know Drudge Report was crashing on Friday. That gets billions of visitors a month, uh, much larger than Infowars. And, you know, we saw it crash. Uh, Infowars has also crashed some. Uh, we also have the backup site, PrisonPlanet.com. And it's because folks know that we have been documenting the war on police. We have been documenting the mainstream media, Hollywood, broadcast TV, but also fiction media in almost every venue. Pushing and, 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 and making it very sexy and very risque and very avant-garde that police are criminals and police are the worst people in the world and police need to die. Now, before I get into all the latest developments and cops getting shot all over the country since Friday and attacked, including just south of us in San Antonio a few hours ago, the police department being shot up, I want to explain something. I am uniquely qualified to speak to what's happening because I saw the threat to our republic by globalization, militarization of our police. I made films about it 20 years ago. I wrote books about it 10 years ago. But I was never anti-cop. I was anti-federal globalist training to turn them into political officers that would oppress speech, to turn them into anti-gun forces, to teach them instinctive shooting training that might save their lives sometimes but kills a lot of innocent people. I was against the type of stuff we saw the feds do at Ruby Ridge and Waco. But even then I wasn't against the feds. I was against globalist crime groups, infiltration cells, that had taken over areas of the federal government. I want to take our country back. So because our police are being more and more federalized and, and our military is being globalized and we're going under international control and a lot of un-American, anti-free speech, anti-liberty things are happening, I've been trying to raise the alarm. And then the media would say, well, you're just against the military, you're just against the police. But then I found the last decade, the police and military, on average, were more sophisticated than I was because they were on the inside that they were being taken over and basically scapegoated. And I found that for groups that are awake, the military is the most awake to the globalist New World Order program. The police are about the second most awake group out there. Doesn't mean they're perfect. Doesn't mean they have big problems. Doesn't mean some departments are totally criminal. That's human nature, absolutely. It isn't just some bad apples. Sometimes you've got whole barrels that are bad and sometimes whole barrels that are good. I've almost found in my research, it's like there's no bad apples or they're all bad apples. It kind of works like that in life and in history. Most people probably recognize that. A restaurant's either totally horrible and out of control and you get sick when you eat there or everything's good on the menu. But separate from that, our country is being taken over by multinational systems that are establishing a form of planetary government called globalism. And I've been fighting for 20 plus years just to expose the fact that that was happening. Now, most Americans know the Federal Reserve is foreign owned and private and part of globalism. Most Americans want it audited or abolished. Most Americans know that the British exit, the Brexit, was about getting out of the unelected EU the liberty movement worldwide, the nationalist movement, the, the movement for prosperity and common sense, led by people like Ron Paul and Matt Drudge and Nigel Farage and people like you 
and Joseph Farah, and, 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 and it's not about giving credit here, folks. It's just we need to understand the people that were there first fighting hardest to show their success, to say, look what you can do when you get involved and fight back as well in the information war. And my job has been to just galvanize as many people as I can, pointing out what was coming so that as the wages of world government came home to roost, people would be ready to stand up and say no to the next phase. Because if you think stuff's bad right now, none of us have seen anything yet. But I read countless university published books about policing, and I studied militarization, and I studied Pentagon programs shipping weapons in, and I, I studied uh, well, the curriculum and what was going on, and I got secret documents that we broke nationally over and over again where the police were training to take on gun owners and veterans and uh, confiscate firearms. But the police themselves were being given this curricula. They didn't want to follow it. They were leaking it to us. So what I'm saying is, if you don't like the TSA groping your genitals and putting you through a naked body scanner while the border is wide open, I totally agree with you. It's a fraud to train us to be slaves. But let's not blame the TSA person themselves. Let's blame ourselves for letting it happen and Congress that did it. And then after we've gotten our house in order, then we can talk about the TSA people. And Lord knows there's some pedophiles want that job. There's some criminals that rob your bags. There's some bad people in there. But the essence of free will and the essence of a free society and the essence of a good society is we go after people for what they individually did, not what happens in groups. If, if cops in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and in Minneapolis, Minnesota last week questionably shoot armed black males during wrestling matches, I don't know if the cops are guilty or not. It's, it's not clear. Let's say they are. Do you then go shoot 15 cops and kill five of them in Dallas? Do you go shoot people on the highway in Georgia and Tennessee and kill a cop and shoot up some cars and shoot up some cars in Florida and shoot up the police station in San Antonio? There's so many of these coming in right now, I can't even keep track of them. There's just cops getting shot all over the place right now. And as I studied this more and more years ago, I realized, oh my gosh, I've been trying to reform the police. And what I've done partially is help wake them up faster to the larger global program. So I wasn't a complete failure. And of course, they weren't waking up just because of me, but because of what they were being taught. You know, the founding fathers are bad. Christians are your enemy. Veterans are all going to start attacking you. Uh, there's going to be a civil war. And we're like, yeah, because the globalists are setting one up. That's how they're going to conquer America. But then it all clicked. Oh, government that has a 9% approval rating in Gallup and a 6% and a, and a approval rating for the media in Gallup and AP, they want to basically scapegoat the police and have a civil war that is only about trying to overthrow the police where they're the lowest level of government so that none of the real revolution ever goes against the globalists that have actually come in and hijacked the country. Because it's not a revolution, it's a restoration. And so if we have a false revolution just based on killing cops, that discredits any legitimate resistance in the future. And then you understand the larger plan and exactly what we're facing and what we're dealing with. Folks, when you've got Facebook and Google and Apple and Twitter all saying Black Lives Matter and censoring folks that expose it, and Hillary Clinton saying, well, it's white people's fault this happened, uh, and, 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 all the, and the Dallas mayor saying that, and, and, and acting like, well, police must reform, like Obama said, like, that is an attempt to make this 10 times worse. This is an attempt over the country. All right, so there's a million different angles to this, but I want to go into some clips here and break down what's currently happening and get into all the other attacks on police that are currently taking place. Multinational corporations, to a great extent, have already captured this country. They want to have Americans at each other's throats, so they have weaponized media, CNN, MSNBC, you name it, local TV stations across the country come out and say, oh my gosh, it is the number one issue in America. The police are hunting down and just executing black men everywhere. This year so far, 2,000 plus people have been shot in Chicago. 90 plus percent by black on black. 500 plus blacks die a year in Chicago at the hands of other blacks with guns. 
You can look it up for yourself. I did whole reports on Friday. They're on Infowars.com showing the FBI's own numbers. You tell a Black Lives Matter person that or some other social justice warrior, and they look at you and say, shut up, racist. Why don't you care about people's lives? And we're just like, look, the truth is police shootings overall are down. The truth is that this is a political diversion from black unemployment being doubled. But if you segue out of that, if Donald Trump gets killed or more Trump supporters get attacked, and then they've set the battle lines with Democrats and the quote minorities and Trump and the white people, even if Trump didn't brand it like that, the media has. This is the recipe we've got for major, major civil unrest. And so many leftists and so many Black Lives Matter people on Infowars and on YouTube put comments going, oh, trying not to have a civil war, you're scared. The majority of people are white still in this country, even though they're old and mentally ill. And they've got guns, and you're not going to win against the military and the police and all this. I'm not trying to stop a civil war because I think I'm going to lose it. I'm trying to stop a civil war because we all lose it, except for the technocrats that are playing us off against each other. This is so stupid. I, I go into stores. I, I, I work with, quote, African people. I'm a great folks. I don't want to fight with anybody. I'm not out to get you. And the media and all these white pimps that I see pushing and, and George Soros and Hillary and the, and the Dallas mayor and Obama and Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, Google, Google, all of them. After the cops got shot, they were putting up big signs saying Black Lives Matter. There were demonstrations all over the country Friday, Saturday and today and cops being beat up and shot all over the place. And then Loretta Lynch comes out and says, we need to reform the police. That'll fix this. Like it's legitimate. Obama, Friday morning came out, we played the clip Friday, and said we need to reform the police. Giving credence to the f cops that got killed as if they were connected to something some other cop did some other place. That's like Hitler saying, oh, some Jew might have done something wrong, so I'm going to arrest all the Jews and I'm going to kill them. And, and all the Black Lives Matter and Ford Foundation, the big leftist groups, Oink, oink, bang, bang, you're dead. We played all the clips Friday. I'm not playing them again today. I mean, I've been to demonstrations myself. My crew has at every demonstration. You got mainly white college students. They're leading the chance about deck the halls with dead cops and all this stuff. And the police are told to stand down and do nothing. And the grand juries do nothing because the system wants to build this to a head. Let me explain something. You've got free speech. and I'm the number one backer of it. But when you start as a media person with, with, with major groups of people that are listening to you, organizing, going out and killing people randomly because of what color they are or because they're wearing a uniform, you're engaged in organizing terrorist attacks. You're involved in racketeering. And I've already decided if I'm out in public and I hear somebody saying kill police, I'm going to break their jaw. I'm done. And, and that's not talk. I'm doing it. You go chanting around me, hey, let's go kill some freaking cops because they're in a uniform. And, you, and, of course, you're too cowardly to do it. You want somebody else to do it. I'm going to punch you right in the face. And I don't, say, I don't usually talk like that in 20 years on air. And it's not that I'm kissing the cop's ass either. But th let, I'm going to explain something to everybody. This attack is by multinational corporations trying to bring down America. So as many problems as the police have, they're the face of local government and our due process and what's left of it. And when they bring that down, the whole country's going down. In a globalist takeover. And then your checks aren't going to cash anymore. There's not going to be any good electricity. This damn society's going to break down like Cuba or Venezuela or Eastern Europe. And this country's going to fall apart. Because it's a design to bring this country down. And I'm not going to sit here and watch a bunch of stupid high school and college punks fueled by propaganda on MTV and CNN out there stomping around acting like a bunch of jackasses. Excuse me, I didn't mean to go there. I apologize. I want to play some clips right now, but I'm telling you, this is an attempt to bring in a civil war in this country. We told you it was coming. It's clearer than day. They're looking at suspending this election. We need to do everything we can to expose who's behind this and say no to it so it backfires. And we need to have all the police departments and citizens and everybody of every race, color, and creed come together.
and realize this is an attempt to get us all at each other's throats and say no to this because this is 21st century warfare. This is being run by the mainstream media we know is our enemy, by the globalists that run the federal government that we know have hijacked it. I mean, this is a no-brainer. that The mayor is saying it's white people's fault in Dallas. He's a big, fat, white guy. These people are pimping everyone. I'm done with it. Let's play a clip here. This is uh, the Black El Paso police chief. His record's one of the best in the country. Greg Allen, this is what he had to say to reporters about Black Lives Matter. What do you have to say to people who will be protesting out there on Sunday? Black Lives Matter people. What do you have to say to them? Black Lives Matter, as far as I'm concerned, is a radical hate group. And for that purpose alone, I think the leadership of this country needs to look a little bit harder at that particular group. The consequences of what we saw in Dallas is due to their efforts. Any other question? All right. Well, let's go ahead now and let's go to um, Obama defending Black Lives Matter while he's over in Europe trying to merge the EU with Eastern Europe. After another night of horrific violence, which I haven't even gotten to yet, let's go to that. Now, in a movement like Black Lives Matter, there's always going to be some folks who say things that uh, are are stupid or imprudent. Or, or shouldn't be. Uh, Overgeneralize or are harsh. Uh, and, and I don't think that you can hold well-meaning activists who are doing the right thing and peacefully protesting, responsible for everything that is uttered at a protest. The and, and there's another clip of him going after guns. But, but, but let's blame all gun owners. We're going to go out to break here. We have George Humphrey coming in studio to talk about all this and a lot more. But when we return, I'll hold George a little bit with us in the next hour. Roger Shaga, when he's playing these clips, I have... Uh, Rudolph Giuliani, who I don't agree with a lot of issues, what he said about Black Lives Matter is absolutely on target. Uh, we're going to play that. We have Sharpton saying, uh, off the pigs, just thought, and again, he's an FBI informant. And I'm, the whole FBI is not involved either, but criminal elements in the federal government can only conquer America if we're at each other's throats. This is, this is a no-brainer. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. Infowars.com. Forward slash show. I know most of you are listening on AM and FM stations. Please spread the word about that broadcast. Support that local affiliate. If you have friends outside the listening area, send them links to infowars.com forward slash show so they can hear the podcast, the free iPhone and Droid apps, the feeds, the video feeds, and more. We'll be right back. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones, and this is an attempt to bring down our republic. We've got gunfire hitting the police station in San Antonio. We got cops shot in Georgia. We got white drivers shot in Georgia, shot in Tennessee, white cops shot in Tennessee, cops shot in Florida, cops shot in just all over the news. Uh, we have video coming up of Al Sharpton uh, saying off the pigs. Um, we've got Obama saying gun control is necessary if you care about the safety of our police officers. As the media just winds up mentally ill people and, you know, all these government funded groups say kill the cops, deck the halls with dead cops. None of them are to blame, though, Obama said. We just played that. Uh, no, no, it's gun owners are to blame. And Hillary says it is uh, whites and racist cops uh, are to blame. And even though an Asian guy shot this black man that was a felon aiming a gun at him in Houston, even the guy's wife said he aimed a gun at him and the cop shot him. My God, I believe these cops, this Asian cop, you aim a gun at him, he shoots you. And then it's, it's and I saw comments on Twitter, they're on InfoWars, by, by Black Lives Matter groups saying, well, well, white supremacy can operate through minorities. You know, you're an Asian cop, somebody points a gun at you and you, 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 you defend yourself. Again, and I'm not anti-black people. I want black people to succeed and be successful, and they're just amazing, great people. But this is social engineering. This is the media taking an issue that is tiny compared to everything else, like flesh-eating bacteria or diabetes or blacks killing blacks or whatever. I mean, you're, you're talking a problem 100 times bigger. And just making this the end of the world. And mainstream media pushing it, and, and, and Google and Facebook pushing it, and uh, Facebook lighting up its whole uh, offices Friday saying Black Lives Matter, and, and, and Zuckerberg saying don't criticize anybody you know that's for Black Lives Matter, because his own employees are criticizing it, because it's a program to cause infighting. Now let's play Giuliani, then I'm going to our guest who's in studio with us. The reality in the black community is there's too much violence in the black community. So a black will die one percent or less at the hands of the police and 99 percent at the hands of a civilian most often another black 
So if you want to protect black lives, then you got to protect black lives, not just against police, which happens rarely, although with tremendous attention, and which happens every 14 hours in Chicago. Every 14 hours. And we never hear from Black Lives Matter. Well, so, it, so if you want to deal, if you want to deal with this, on the black side, you've got to teach your children to be respectful to the police, and you've got to teach your children that the real danger to them is not the police. The real danger to them, 99 out of 100 times, 9,900 out of 1,000 times, are other black kids who are going to kill them. That's the way they're going to die. So. And, and, when you, and, and when you say Black Lives Matter, and folks, that's I've exactly got racist. issues with uh, Giuliani on some issues, but I mean, there that is absolute truth. And, and, and this is my problem. I have the Justice Department own numbers last year. 258 black Americans were killed by police. Let's just say all of those were illegitimate, even though most of it was probably legitimate. Let's just say all of it's bad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's over 500 blacks killed by blacks in Chicago last year. It's 2,000 plus shots so far this year in Chicago. It's not the cops. All I'm saying is I don't like warrantless checkpoints. I don't like DWI blood draws. I don't like a lot of unconstitutional stuff going on with the police, but that's our governments that are doing that. That's where we should change it. But it's so clear it's an attempt at causing a civil war. And I've been using that term for a long time. Now that's being picked up and you see folks actually calling for a civil war. Now, George Humphrey is a very successful businessman, author, researcher, uh, major exporter, importer, you name it, good friend of mine. I remember 25 years ago when I was working for Pat Buchanan's campaign as I was a high school senior, going to his house to pick up hundreds of signs to go put up around town. And then as soon as I got on Access Television on Local Talk Radio, he was a talk show host. So I've been friends with this guy uh, really 21 years, but knew him 25 years ago. And uh, he has uh, was a Democrat on the city council, uh, but he's a patriot. And he's somebody that has been warning of this and warning of a destabilization program. He's with us to the bottom of the hour next hour. And I have a very special report dealing with uh, NATO talking about trying to move missiles up against the Russian border. That'd be like if Russia moved missiles into Cuba. This is a big deal. Putin has said they're looking at actually bombing those missiles. Um, and so the Ministry of Defense has said that. Their foreign minister has said that. So this is really escalating. We've got that special report uh, coming up. I intend to take a few calls next hour. But we've got Hillary Clinton blames whites and cops for deaths of young black men. The video article's up on Infowars.com from Breitbart. Uh, we just have all this craziness. And it's just so sad. Don't people know the establishment that's screwing us all over and robbing us all of our freedoms and our future is pushing this. So the question is, why are they pushing it? And then, of course, George has some info on Trump and his big concerns. George, great to have you here with us. <laughs> Alex, it's always great to be here, and I love seeing you. And for those who are listening, I've known Alex for a long time, and I'll tell you what, he is a... He's a dear friend of mine, and what he's saying today is so right on. It's so right on. In the period of time that we're in right now, it's chaos. And it's fixing to get a lot, lot, lot worse in the near future. And so that's why it's up to us who are sitting in the studio, but more as importantly or more importantly to the people who are listening our country, our republic, our, our culture, our world is worth preserving. The good things of this nation are so overwhelming. I travel all over the world. I travel through China, through Southeast Asia, through Europe, South America. And I'll tell you what, the republic, the constitutional republic of this country, where there is supposedly a nation of laws, this is something a very, very positive thing. And quite clearly, the things that Alex and I have been talking about on air for the last 25 years is that there is a concentrated, very focused movement by the Illuminati to destroy the middle class, to destroy the good things of this country. And it's anti-human. Absolutely, it's anti Listen to what Alex has said. It's anti-human. Human beings don't go in and and kill 55 people in a club. They don't do these things unless they're Manchurian candidates. One issue after another issue after another issue, just in the last two or three weeks, it, it is so absolutely clear and positive. We're facing, we're facing that, an evil intellect. That the, that the Manchurian candidate vibration is out there. And then the question is, first of all, we have to be aware 
that the predominant media is completely manipulated. I can't believe the cops weren't even cold and they were blaming the cops. A absolutely. I mean, the president was on Friday. I, this is incredible. You know, Alex, when I was on the city council, you, you know, I've been kind of a hippie all my life. And, you know, I, I remember being pulled over many times in Houston when I had long hair and being pushed around. And I didn't like it. But I was also a city councilman and I helped run the police department in the city. And we had a hell, heck of a good police department. Chief Edwards, he was a peace officer, and during the 70s and the 80s, the city of Austin had one of the finest police departments in the country because the police cared about the people. We still have a lot of good police here in Austin, Texas right now, and just like you're saying... We are not defending the police 100% because if... if but a, there's a clear plan to just overthrow a, everything. Absolutely. There's an attack on America. And if, there is an, if a policeman breaks the law, he should be tried and convicted. But what is going on right now, as you're saying so eloquently, it's unbelievable that these people believe it. And these... And the, and They're it, like, oh, yeah, we, yeah, we got the president and the attorney general, we got to reform the cops. In response to cops being dead, it's their fault they're dead. And, and you know, it's what, their fault they got shot. What the hell? And you know where this is coming from? This is not coming from somebody like a Malcolm X or somebody like this. George Soros, a <laughs> Nazi collaborator, all the Hillary Clinton, all these globalists. He is a Hungarian communist billionaire who his track record. It is white communist Illuminati stooges who are funding this, who are paying these Black Lives Matter. They admit that. $16 an hour to go out and do this stuff. Friends, please. Why is George Soros not arrested? He is involved in sedition. Of course he is. Because we are, we are, the situation in this country is past the rule. The truth of is, you can look at Soros. He's tied into the dark side. Of course, of course. That guy's getting di and, orders directly and, from the freaking... He, and he wants to be part of the Illuminati. He's still a, a small. Oh, yeah, he's getting guy. direct orders from hell, folks. He Look, I'll just say it. Your, your new book's out. It's about where they're getting the orders from. It's satanic, folks. Life, love, and joy. George Humphrey, my good friend. These people are out to get the whole planet. I don't care what color you are. You got to unite against them. I mean, deserve to be shot in the back. Neither did five cops in Dallas. Folks, we're going to get into some really heavy stuff because. I'm noticing either people are more awake or they're like zombies now. People I've known for 20, 30 years suddenly just hardly talk and just watch TV all day. They're in a mesmerized state. Even mainstream media admits most kids have lower language skills, are in a dream state, are, are brain damaged. They have this new Pokemon system where it projects false reality into the real world and you wear these goggles or use your phone and then play Pokemon in the real world and kids are like collapsing and stuff and having convulsions. That's happened before. The point is, there's a lot of weird stuff going on, a lot of really advanced things going on. And so when you see this whole Black Lives Matter thing, I told the story Friday, Thursday, the day this happened, I was supposed to go meet with a supplement maker who had come up with a supplement over a decade ago that was put in Whole Foods that's really high quality but never took off nationally that I was looking at trying to have an acquisition of. That's what we do. We find ourselves with products. Got a big sale going right now that ends tomorrow. 20 to 40% off, InfoWarsStore.com. But I digress. And she couldn't go to the meeting. She said, I, my, my, you know, the, you know, the guy that I had a baby with, he's moved back to India, but he's Indian. My, you, know, you know, my son's five years old. He's half Indian. He's brown. The police are going to kill him. I'm scared to go out. And I had to sit there to a person who's successful in business and go, Indians don't even show up on the police shooting rate. I mean, right. Indians probably uh, like have some white collar crime, but there's like no known Indians being shot. And didn't matter to her. She goes, she's brown. No, he's brown. He's brown. This is this mind control where people really believe this is an epidemic. This is an example of someone completely living in fear. Forget if the police are good or bad. This woman is literally, you know, sitting there in her nice house, their nice car, a successful business person, shaking in fear that cops are going to kill her son because he's brown. It's total BS, George. Well, first of all, what we need to remember, what I need to keep remembering is that white, black, Hispanic, Asian, we're all human beings. We're all part Cops of Cops have not shot any Indians that I know of. We're all part of God's creation. Exactly, but and it's not You know what? And, and I have I have I have a lot of friends who are of color. And my friends of color are more aware of the new world order relatively than most of my, the white people. That's are. what I found. And and Is that why they're being targeted? Absolutely because they 
separate and control, separate and control, separate and control. By and large, most Native uh, black people, most African Americans are aware of the new world order. They want freedom. They've known direct slavery, and they're aware of the insanity. This is an absolute. So they're used as the detonator, though. Of course they are. And the thing about it is, remember that all of Black Lives Matter is being funded by Eastern European Hungarian communists through through this, and and most of the people say the most outrageous things are white punks. They're the leaders. They're white punks. I've, I've dealt with two or three of these kids in the last couple of weeks. And it's like, you are unbelievable. And most of the black people that I've talked to in the last two or three weeks, they're just they're just rolling their eyes. No, I agree. Most, I agree. But the, the media aren't buying. No, I agree. Of. But the media takes it and makes it look like that. So of course it is. George, I mean, let's talk about because you're you're a smart guy, business, politics, you name it. What is the point of this? Because to me, it's so ridiculous to have Hillary and the mayor of Dallas and Obama blaming the cops and white people and all this. Obviously, this is their own doing. They've set this up. What is the point of all this? Okay, first of all, you and I both know that a magician waves his hand up here with the wand. And it gets everybody looking up here. But he's picking. So what are they doing picking, while we're doing this, while we're watching this? He, they're creating a civil war and in and, and, and destroying us because America is the last bastion of freedom. As Thomas Paine used to say, America can be the beacon of freedom for the rest that's it, of the that's world. It. This is an attack on our country. Of course, attack on not only our country, the globalists but have all tried of the good things that all human beings desire. That's they tried to deserve. take over our institutions. They haven't been fully successful. So now they're going to take a wrecking ball to it. Yes. And the point is is that if we human beings, if we use our common sense and we have a, a little bit of love in our hearts and a little bit of courage in our spines, we can easily see through this. And we have, I, I'm, I'm a relative optimist. I know, I know that we as human beings, black, white, his, all, all of us together, we can stop this stuff. We do, I, I, that's it. I don't want us to be conned and be, be failures. Because I, I love everybody and I have to sit here and just watch this government-funded crap. It's so ridiculous. You know, I, I've known Alex for a long, long time. And you know what? There is not a person on this in this country who's talking about equal rights any more than you are. Because it takes, it's going to take all of us fighting this insanity. It's going to take all of us. And so for the listeners out there who are not white middle class people who are supposedly the rednecks we're all in this together slavery it used to be the blacks were the slaves we saw now everyone is a slave it's psychological slavery and the only way the slave master can win is playing us off against each other yes what do you think i see desperation in hillary and the globalist of course let's get to the big point you you came in with some very chilling statements because i respect you stuff you've warned me about it's always come true you warned me about derivatives 10 years before i knew what they were george humphrey best-selling author researcher, businessman, what is going on with Donald Trump? You were telling me earlier, yes, he's for okay. real, but they're going to kill him. Well, I, and, I and didn't they say they're going to kill him. They're I try. That it, that's a possibility. Now, all we have to, history repeats itself. In 1980, Jimmy Carter against Ronald Reagan, they had a, a RAN gate. 1991, we had Waco in Oklahoma City when Bill Clinton came in. 2001, we had 9-11. These are all false flag. 2008, we had the contr controlled breakdown of the economy. There's, there's a very high possibility that there's going to be a major. And if you look at, at this, all these false flags have progressed in magnitude. And so what we're looking at. Good is, God, the next one's going to be huge. It, it could be. And the only way we stop it is to be aware of it right now, to, to do everything we can to diffuse that and to put it out. That's now, right, because the enemy knows we're aware they're going to back off. Now, clearly, clearly, Miss Hillary Rodham Clinton, 
You know, back in the 90s, I, I wrote a couple books, one called Common Sense, another called Uncommon Sense. I went up to Arkansas, and I met with a bunch of researchers up there. I went to Mena, Arkansas. I did the whole thing. And there's a whole list of the 82 different people between 1979 and 1992, between the ages of 12 and 57, who all died violent deaths. And guess what? Their only common denominator was their connection with the Clintons. I'm not the one who came up with this. It's all over the internet. And anybody listening to this can check it's it out. It's called Arkansas. It's called Arkansas. Just like Bill Clinton's father was not was not Clinton. You, you know who Bill Clinton's real father Rockefeller. was. Rockefeller. Yeah, Bill Clinton is a Rockefeller. That's the reason he got to go to Georgetown. That's the reason he got a Rhodes Scholarship. That's the way he got to Russia without a visa. That's the way he got to Yale Law School. That's the way he got elected the Attorney General of Arkansas at age 26. Come on, folks, let's wake up. Now, I think that about... 85 to 95 percent of the people who are listening to this probably know this. But the point is, is that it is up to us, the people who are well, your piece on the break. You don't need it. listening to this show, is that it is up to us to build our base. We have to get, we need to reach a critical mass. And each of you who are listening, understand you are powerful. You have the ability to make a change. And as Mahatma Gandhi used to say, in the heart of each man and woman is the seed of the universe. No matter what color you are, how much money you've got, da 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 realize that what we're saying and what you're hearing and what you know to be true is that love and justice and right action is important. We do not need to go down this road toward chaos. And that's exactly what is being planned for us. It's so naked, though, George, when you're awake. I mean, I look at Hillary saying it's white people's fault, and, and, I, and I look at Obama saying that. It's just legitimizing this. They want this to get worse. Of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, it's so obvious. You and I did, too. You, you were the lead guy. We did fall, fall the Republic and the Obama deception. And we said Obama would do this and this. And it all. And in fact, he did about three times more. Nobody, but nobody, is talk, except you, is talking about the TPP. It makes NAFTA and GATT seem like child's play. The TPP sells the sovereignty of this country and nobody's talking about it. Mr. World Trump. government's coming in, taking full control of our lives and we're sitting here seeing civil war be started in America and police attacked across the country as if police that are run by our governments that we elect and control are the problem. We need to look ourselves in the mirror and we need to look government in the mirror and take it back. This is out of control. Second hour with George Humphrey, my friend, straight ahead. We'll talk about his book, that gets into who who are the Illuminati? Who pulls their strings? Why are they so unified? Life, love, joy. George Humphrey, the new book. We'll tell you how to get it straight ahead. We also have a huge special going at InfoWarsStore.com. By the way, it's not about credit. My crew doesn't want credit, neither do I. But George Humphrey's trying to give me credit. This guy is amazing. I learned so much from him 25 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, a year ago, five minutes ago. But also Nico and Daria and uh, Wes and just all the rest of the crew, everybody, they're amazing making this all possible. You, the listeners, the affiliates, uh, I am very honored to be here trying to just have prosperity, common sense, peace among men and women, uh, and just brotherly love. The problem is throughout history, there's an unseen force. Christians call it the devil that is manipulating human society. We're going to talk about that more in the next segment. I want to take a few calls as well before George leaves us at about 45 after when I air this special report uh, on Putin warning of nuclear war that's so important that it's gotten no attention. That's why we're going to air it. Uh, but the toll-free number to join us, different number than the weekday number, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. I'm not going to say first-time callers. I'm just saying have a good phone, have your point, your question. We really want to talk to you. 877-789-ALEX. Uh, all right, George, we've got three minutes, four minutes to break. Look, I don't know how the whole universe works. We're born on this planet in the middle of space around a sun. What is this? You know, it's, it's all crazy. <laughs> but I've studied history. Every ancient society said there's a dark, evil force manipulating through the ether, you know, from the sky, from another dimension to try to destroy humanity. And then I see our own elite. <clears throat> there's no doubt they're trying to destroy the creation, the genetics, the planet, us, while always posing that they're our saviors. Now, I haven't read your book yet. just got it today. I know you're a really smart guy. But you, basically, you get into the unseen hand. What's behind the Illuminati? 
Well, I know whether it's Bohemian Grove or Skull and Bones or any group, they believe they're praying to entities in another dimension that are giving them knowledge. And then I look at Darwin and Huxley and all these people, they envision biometrics, DNA, atomic weapons, a hundred years before they were being used. So they're, whatever it is, humans who believe they're interfacing with something on the other side are getting something. I mean, there's something to this. There's no question. And, and, and the one called Jesus, his real name was Yeshua ben Joseph. He, you know, put a, an amazing soul on this planet. Now, his family, they were from an Essene family, but they were also Nazarene. The Nazarenes were kind of like the hippies of the, of the Mediterranean. They were very, very cool, and they knew the prophecies and everything. In the mid-1940s, the Nag Hammadi, these, these texts were found in Egypt, and they were very well done. And they were the writings of the Essenes and the Nazarenes about what they saw as the world, as, as, as what was going on. 40% of what they talked about was called the Archonic Energy. And the Nazarenes, who were part of the tradition of the one called Jesus, wrote that there was a dark force, an energy called the Archons, that were not biological, but it was sentient energy that comes down to... The Arabs call them genies. Of course. Of course. And I won't go into that because I have some pretty dark opinions about some of the people who are doing this. But why are human beings acting so crazy? Why are we doing this? If you talk to 99 out of 100 people, we can figure out how to make this world better. Just like I'm that. Not, I'm not racist. Just I don't want to screw people over. No, we want them I don't to have be bad will. We, we, as you said before, a rising tide lifts all ships. We want there to be prosperity for everybody. But there is a force in this universe. There is a force in this galaxy, there is a force in this solar system, and there's a force on this planet that is intentionally creating chaos and eating off of that energy. It's called the Archonic Force. And you know about this, I know about this, it's all over. And the point is, is that we as human beings represent the highest vibration, a potential vibration of universal consciousness. Now, our DNA is still relatively simple, but it has the potential to grow. We'll talk about it more. Well, we're going to talk about more on Tuesday. You're coming yeah. back in Tuesday. Yeah. And, and look, whether people believe this or not, I've studied the elites. They believe this. But they are like tuned into the evil thinking it's going to give them some power. And they're going to build a machine and merge with it and be gone. Absolutely. They're totally throwing out everything we've already got for this de promise of something they're getting. It, it, it's just incredible. Stay with us. I was during that 60 second break, ran in to get Go tell that a glass of iced tea. Go and, tell that and there was Obama on Fox News at NATO. We already played a clip last hour, but it was a new clip. It said live. This is going on like 10 o'clock at night over there or something. Blaming tension and racism in communities for the cops getting shot in Dallas and saying gun control is the answer. The media hyped all this. There isn't an epidemic of blacks being shot by police. There's an epidemic of drug laws putting nonviolent people in jail, including blacks. Oh, and, 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 and Hillary and, and, and Clinton got that through. And again, it's not about even being... A Republican and blaming Democrats. I'm not a Republican. It's just logic and facts. It's not true, but it's the victory of perception over reality. Delusion. Delusion. Lies. And who's the father of lies? George Humphrey, my friend, has written the new book that just came out, available at Amazon.com, Life, Love, Joy, A Story of Human's Origins, The Polarity of Present Choices, and Our Unrealized Potential. And everything the globalists do is about suppressing our potential. And George, such a sweetheart, he's selling this book at cost. But it's, it's a powerful book. I just started reading it. He'll be back on Tuesday talking about the book itself. But look, George, all I know is everything that social engineers do is about suppressing human potential. Everything they do is about cutting off resources. Everything they do is about telling us we're ugly, we're bad, we're no good when we're not. Uh, it, it's, it's again, we're fallen because we are bought into this system. And this system is doing everything it can from keeping us from ascending. Absolutely. And one of the things that we need to remember 
is that everything is quantum. Everything is light. Everything is vibration. Everything is consciousness. That's why in Newtonian physics, for every action, there's an opposite and equal and reaction. Absolutely. And, and right now... Every clearly, time the enemy hits... In the first five or six dimensions, there's polarity. And because there is more energy coming into our solar system, this is not some new age theory. It's just a fact is that the different polarities, what we call the dark and the light, the yin and yang, are getting more powerful. The dark is getting darker and the light's getting brighter. And the point is, is that each and every one of us as human beings have a choice. We can continue to be controlled by the cultural zeitgeist, which is like the Hunger Games, and being controlled a false by, program. by the, the synthetic manipulation of victim consciousness, and that's exactly what Explain they Explain that. Everything they do. Instead, when I get attacked, I feel more powerful and up to defeat it. But in victim consciousness, you grovel and submit. Absolutely. Explain the difference. And, and, and for whatever reason, you, perhaps myself, many of the people listening, we've broken out of what's called the cultural zeitgeist, the synthetic matrix, and we are more con connected with our morphogenic field and connected with the universal, which is universal law, natural law, and, and, and what we're we've really... We've broken out of the control paradigm. Yes, and we are able, if we continue to keep going, to... Acti I, I don't want to get too esoteric here, but to activate the energy systems within our body, which are called chakras, and to become clearer and more aware and more full of light and more self-powerful. We human beings... Well, take the Pentagon. Let's separate yes. from what you just said. The Pentagon in Jade Helm, which we never said was martial law. It was a training for martial right. law. The Pentagon says we must stop independent, self-empowered individuals. The threat, they said, was independently conscious individuals outside of the control grid. Of course it is. And they actually admit they're scared of that. Of course it is, because it's all about power. And clearly, when we look so They want us to tune into their controlled grid. I'm not blaming the Pentagon, folks. This is their orders. They want us to tune into their wavelength, yep. global government, political correctness, and then just give our will over to that. And, and clearly, as, as, as Alex said, we are not blaming most of the military. We're not blaming the Pentagon per se, but we are blaming Those in control. the tip of the, uh, of the uh, pyramid, the people behind the, the beings behind the Illuminati. And because this, this game, and we're in a game, life is a dream, realize it. Life is a challenge, meet it. Life is a game, play it, and life is love, accept it. But we're in the challenge part, and we've got to accept the challenge and realize that most of what we're seeing is a dream or false, or it's a, it's a, it's a zeitgeist that's not true. It's synthetic in nature. The you, Matrix. You and I, and most of the people, we are trinary. We've got body, mind, and spirit, and we're carbon, and we're sentient. We have the DNA to become just incredible beings of multidimensional consciousness to bring love and consciousness and do the right thing. It's so cool. What's, I am such an optimist, but at the same time... Exactly. So, all we want to do is build and bring all this goodness into the world, and then once you do that, there's the enemy right there yes. trying to block you. And, and they're trying to block all this coming in, and then they're sitting there demonizing and just attacking local government. Just go kill some cop. That's how you fix the world. No, it's how you bring anarchy and death into the world. And, and, and just like in the 1500s, the 1600s, 1700s, England, France, Spain, Portugal, they went out and imperialized the whole world. They went to Africa. They went to South uh, uh, America. They went to Asia. And the imperialism was spread. And, and they did everything they could to make the people weaker, like bringing in heroin into China. The same thing is happening. Yeah, absolutely. The same thing is happening with right now. And we need to see through this mirage, see through the illusion, and realize that we do not have to be victims. Let me ask you this question then. I don't have a desire to have power. I don't have a desire to tell people what to do. In fact, I hate it. But at the same time, then people that want liberty don't want to be in charge. So we sit back and let evil run it. We have to just go ahead and get in charge to basically destroy their, their systems and then turn open free systems, uh, you know, wide open and then take free sentient beings that want to be awake into that system, try to shift the paradigm. But then I don't have the will or the desire to even control anything. So how do I ever shift that? Well, first of all, 
I'm sure you're aware of the four universal laws, the law of attraction, the law of conscious manifestation, yes. the law of allowance, and the law of balance and harmony. For me, the hardest one is the law of allowance, letting other people do their thing. But we have to have barriers because being in body, in the spirit... Well, is, I'm, I, is exactly. Sexual. I'm allowed to have my freedom, right. so that doesn't mean you get to run me over. Yeah, but if somebody b comes in and is going to mess with us and destroy our families, destroy our culture. It is our right, it is our responsibility to stand up and say, no, this is not going to so happen. So isn't that the problem, is the good people have not taken action? Absolutely. And even Mahatma Gandhi, I lived five years in India, and I am a Gandhi I, Gandhi was incredible, but he wasn't totally nonviolent. He would talk about what is called ahimsa, which most people say is nonviolence. No, what he said, it is better for a man to go to war and kill than be a coward and say that he is nonviolent. It takes courage to stand up for what is right and for what is free and what is natural law. And that's what we have to do as human beings if we're going to get through this because Folks, we are in the sixth mass extinction period of time. That's right. Let's expand on this. And the elite are trying to gear us up. They're trying to get us ready consciously for human extinction like it's sexy and cool. They're, they're already poisoning your food and your water. They're already coming after you. They're already destroying every institution. Not that it's perfect, because but they want collapse. And you have to understand that this is the animating contest of liberty. This fight is meant to grow your muscles culturally, spiritually, intellectually, to be even stronger, to be able to deal with the incredible developments that humans are about to have. This, this is the ascension of humanity that's happening right now, and the globals are trying to suppress it. Absolutely. And this deal, this game, whatever you want to call this thing, it's, you know, I've been doing this for years. In this last year and a half, my eyes have just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger because there's facade after facade after facade. And I know that I don't have all the answers, but I'll tell you what, folks, the game is on. There's no timeouts right now. Every single one of you watching and listening to this, it is essential that we come together, first of all, with love in our heart. And we're going to break. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, 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 folks. If you wanted to have some violent revolution, I'm not calling for that because information is the way to go. If they get us in a corner, we physically fight, and then we'll win. Don't worry. We're ten times stronger. But if you want to have revolution against government, it's not some cop at a gas station pumping gas you shoot in the back so his kids don't see him at night. If you were going to go after somebody, it'd be George Soros. That's all I'm saying. You're a loser when you sit there and attack nameless people. George Humphrey has the new book out, Life, Love, Joy. George, you say you get this at Amazon.com or else? Uh, Amazon.com, Kindle, and maybe another place. No, I want to carry it in for us. We'll okay. get it done. We'll all welding. You know what, Alex, in the past, is, I think that you have sold, I know, don't think you have sold thousands of my other books called Common Sense, Uncommon Sense, 9-11, The Great Illusion. Uh, and you know what, for Buy your stuff through, Alex. Come on. We got to support each other. We no, no, gotta... nothing about me. No, 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 no. Well, I speaking, of plugs, speaking, of speaking of plugs, speaking of plugs. I'm going to plug you because I love you and because you're doing this 24-7, 365. And I'll tell you what. This guy is, you know, he he gets mad, he yells, sometimes he exaggerates, but I'll tell you what, he is our guy and we need to support him 100% because what he's saying right now Everybody's got to chill, and we've got to get objective and realize that we're being lied to. Blacks, white, Hispanics, Asians, we got to stick together. Plus, I mean, it's all divided. And you're right, sometimes I exaggerate. Most of the time, though, I underestimate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I like mean all we, I do is try to tell the truth. Just like when we did those movies called The Obama Deception and, and The Fall of Three the Republic. Three times worse. It was much, much worse than what we said. Much worse. So we did, like, predict a lot of stuff. Those absolutely. Are, those films are free online. Speaking of plugging, and since you mentioned it, we're running a food special with all this destabilization that's going on, the highest quality non-GMO produced right here in the U.S. with the top folks up in Utah, the Mormons. They're the best folks to get storable foods from. My Patriot Supply, we sell their whole spectrum of foods. We have InfoWars Select, which is their whole group of foods, discounted where nobody else can do it, 20 to 40% off. X2 is about to sell out. That's 20% off. All the non-GMO heirloom open pollinated seeds, 20% off. Uh, with the Alexa Pure and Pro Pure water filters, all of it. Uh, uh, optics, shortwave radios, everything. That ends tomorrow. Infowarsstore.com. 
or call toll-free 888-253-3139. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, our crew will answer, take your calls. And that's how we fund ourselves. Free association, high-quality products. These are the very best nutraceuticals you're going to find anywhere. The very best non-GMO seeds, the very best books, films, materials, just whatever we think is the very best. And we get the lowest prices, InfoWarsStore.com. So thank you for the support. And look, I've, I've sat there, George. I've thought a lot about who runs this, who does this, why do these elites want to do this? The globalists will do things that hurt themselves for their larger program. And I don't know yeah. who runs it or, you know, I mean, I'm a Christian. So I go with the Isle of Patmos and John the Revelator and Mark of the Beast and world government and all of that, which says there's this evil outside group coming in to control humanity. That fits in with what you're saying in your new book. But all I know is whether it's Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, the elites, they believe they're getting information from outside entities. And all I know is it's giving them power. But, but, but separate from that, Maybe it's just mental. Maybe it's some weird, twisted gene. Regardless, what the globalists are building is a very, very evil system, George. There's no, there's no question about it. And the, and the fact is that both you and I have been at Bohemia Grove. We both know that there are satanic rites going on. We both know that there are ritual killings. What is Satanism? Let's boil that down. It just means it's destructive. Woo! That's a big issue right there. What but is Satanism? It's hard to say, but there's a, there's a, it's service to self. It's service to self. And there's a difference supposedly between the 31st, 32nd, 33rd degrees of, of Freemasonry. And there's a difference between supposedly Lucifer and Satan. And this is a show all in, in and of itself. But the fact is, is that the one called Satan represents the arconic energy. He is here to control human beings, to create chaos and not allow us our free will. Now, everybody has different terms and words for it, but the one called Jesus, Yeshua, and other great teachers, we have the ability as human beings, right here, right now, to transcend this. Let me ask you a question then. If they sit there and they talk about all of this, I mean, obviously free will is the way to go. And if we're looking at this, the elites believe they're following Lucifer, getting power from yep. Lucifer, then I'm going to phone calls. All I know is that free will is the way to go. That's obviously the way to go. But so much about what this global system is about is about ending free will. Absolutely. I've got ABC news pieces where they go, everyone will soon get a microchip. They've gone from denying all this to admitting it. But meanwhile, the churches are totally dead, not talking about it. You know, the amazing thing is, is that the two vice presidents of Google Corporation... Ray Kurzweil and Regina Dugan. Ray Kurzweil was called the smartest man in America by Bill Gates. His two best-selling books are Spiritual Machines and Transhumanism is Now. He is ab actively advocating the creation of binary, synthetic, quote, human beings. What? That's artificial intelligence. And then there's Regina Dugan, who is perhaps the most dangerous woman, even more dangerous than Hillary, who is head of DARPA for five years, who is actively advocating taking a pill, a synthetic pill, to become a part of the binary net. We, as human beings, we're trinary. We have souls. We're not machines that are to be turned And again, when you merge with this, you give up your free will. Yes, and we're carbon. We're not synthetic. We are here to be free. And that's why there's a global carbon tax. There's uh, a war on carbon. Of course there is. You know, what's the main phone besides the Apple? It's the Android. The Android phones. They want slaves. They want good little slaves. They have want And if anybody money. asks, oh, who's Apple? They're liberal. They have the worst factories in China with suicide nets, forced abortion, forced drugging. But it's okay because their, their CEOs wear, have beards and have little different colored socks and go liberal, and wear, liberal, and, liberal. And they wear blue jeans when they give conferences. <laughs> I was. It's in, all camouflage. I was in China not too long ago, next to the the new Apple headquarters, and you know what what Alex is saying is right. Apple was one of the not the first, but they are one of the five corporate nine corporations to sell out to the NSA and to the Prism computers and folks the artificial intelligence. Every every telephone call, every time it's already you, operating, it's already operating, and they're creating artificial. They admit it. They admit it. But I can intellectually see it and spiritually feel it. We're already dealing not just with the beyond, but now it's got its AI against it. it it's I mean, already are, there. And it just those, activated. And for those of you who don't, I'm, 
I'm sure 95% of the people realize this. Hollywood, by and large, is a vehicle of the Illuminati. They put this information out. They say they're following free will, but it's not informed consent. Movies like Ex Machina, an incredible movie, but it's it's right there. It's getting you ready. The new Terminator movie, Genesis, it's all out there, friends. I mean, without being paranoid, wake up, wake up, wake up, because you know what? Artificial intelligence is the greatest danger to the human beings on this planet. All you have to do is go into any coffee shop. I agree, but let's go beyond this. Let me finish that point. Okay. Let's go beyond this. There are seven and a half billion of us. Yep. The enemy thinks they're going to win, but the minute humanity is aware of this, even if there's only a billion of us left, when we're aware, game over. Because then humans are going next level. We're designed to defeat this, and this is all just a big test. I got a feeling that uh, the guy in the sky had this all figured out, George. In my gut, we're going to win, my friend. Yeah, we, we can do it, but the time to start is right now. Not next week, not next month, but right now to make a decision. Do you believe that life is sacred? And I know that life is sacred because we're part of God's creation. That's right. Stay there. You have to believe in life. Whether it's a little lizard in your backyard or the food you're eating on your table, we must be rational, sentient beings. All right, I'm taking your phone calls right now. I have this incredibly important Vladimir Putin speech warning of nuclear war that no one is covering in the U.S. media coming up in the final segment. I want to go to uh, Bill and Wild and Todd and Jeremy and Andrew and Anthony and Daniel. He's come back for at least an hour on Tuesday. George Humphrey, my good friend of many years ago, new book out, Life, Love, and Joy. Um, the elites believe they're becoming gods. Ray Kurzweil said, I don't believe in God yet. I'm going to merge the machines. But first, humanity must be basically destroyed. So I never covered this type of stuff because you know, I just cover facts. And I couldn't people you know, to agree the Federal Reserve was private, even though it was admitted. But the elite believe the stuff that George is talking about, but not from his perspective, from an anti-human perspective. That's why they think we're all bad and got to get rid of us. I mean, it's really evil. So we do, you know, get into the weird cosmology they're involved in. Um, regardless, we're seeing aliens here on Earth. Genetically engineered species are new. Animals being spliced with other animals, that's new. Uh, we're seeing a war on the Earth and the people that claim they're trying to save the earth are the ones prosecuting the war. <laughs> it's so amazing. Al Gore and these people in Rio, it is unbelievable that they get that. You, you've been a big environmentalist. You were a famous environmentalist before you got involved in this. Hey, I am a number one tree hugger, and I still am. I, You know, you can't get But is it crazy to see the folks that are killing the earth claiming they support it? It's blows my mind they they're talking about this carbon's thing. the problem not gmo and, and and as they're talking the chemtrails are right above them and they're not even pointing that out the chemtrails are poisoning us all and you which know, even chuck norris talks about they're declassified they're spraying aluminum dioxide on us yeah it's line, killing our brains line, boron many other things and it's creating a synthetic reality are you seeing how a lot of the public's like literally brain dead now you know, once a week, I'll, I'll get people, I'll say, what is that up there? And 90% of the people will look up and go, oh, I don't know, it's just normal or chem, a contrail. I mean, it, it is self-evident. It's eyes wide shut. Well, it's declassified. Let's take some phone calls. <laughs> Let's talk to folks in Kansas. Bill in Kansas, you're on the air with George Humphrey. Go ahead. Yeah, Alex, this is Bill. Hey, uh, I have a, a question and then a, a quick statement. The first question is, is that could this, the guy in Dallas, could it possibly be the very first time that a mass shooter in the United States wasn't on some sort of SSR inhibitors, or do you think that the VA probably had him all doped up? Or you know, that's why I love taking calls. I should have been from the very first minute of the show. The listeners always put up the points. I've never seen a mass shooter, whether it was Kip Kinkle or Harris and Kleibel, that wasn't on those drugs because they put you in a dream state. They've got so many people that were you know, disarmably discharged like this guy on it. Most of them are. I bet money. Again, it's, it, he's wound up by the media. He's mind controlled. He's in a dream state. I bet you. Where is that news? They're always on it. That's a great question, George. <laughs> he's a Manchurian candidate. I mean, it's just pure and simple. Human beings don't do that to other human beings unless they are their neurological systems are overridden. Look, they, some cop yeah. kills one of my kids or somebody wrongfully, and they don't get in trouble, then there might be an issue. What, what is this new thing where a cop did something in Minnesota? Let's kill cops in Dallas. It, it, it 
it doesn't work that way unless there is outside interference. And and we just got to be aware of that. All of this is pre -conceived. It's so stupid. It's so yeah. stupid. It'd be like if you're a black guy and some Klan guy attacks you. You don't go attack some random white guy. You go find the Klan guy. Yeah, and and the thing about it is, we need to see through this. We need to be objective. We need to make sure. When the mainstream media is pushing it, that's the enemy. We know it's bull. Of course. I mean, the media's like, of course, it's white people's fault. They did it. Uh, 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 what was your comment, Bill? Well, all these people uh, on both sides of the issue, the left and the right, they're being bombarded with all this bull, and uh, they don't realize that in the middle of the heat of conflict, if they got stuck stood back and looked that they all have common issues with the current exactly. legal and political system. And the conflicts are based on our moving away from the constitutional Christian-based law and moving to a law of man and mammon. And if you step back out of the fog and look at it, the left and the black and the white and the red and the brown and the good. Everybody's on the same red page. Red Great point. They all have a central issue with the perversion in the center that is attempting to manipulate and brainwash us. No, that's right. Good point. Let me, let me get us more calls, but I just want to say this. I want everybody to get ahead. Absolutely. And it's just fundamentally crazy that I would think if blacks, most people are just intermarrying anyway, it's not even thing happening. A black person has a bad life, I get ahead. That's a load of horse crap. That's not how it works, George, in economics. Everybody knows an area where everybody's doing better, everybody does better. That's right. I mean, again, <laughs> united we stand, divided we fall. United we stand, divided and we fall. Get and they want to get us in the crisis. I say united, I mean all Americans. United around the truth, though. We can't around unite around the, the globalists. Around the Constitution. Because they the stage these events and say unite the around Republic, them. About truth and about love and about right action. That's right. Okay, great points. Thank you, Bill. Wild in Wisconsin. You're on the air worldwide. Go ahead. Hi, two queries, one for Alex, one for George. Sure, go ahead. Uh, George, I know what I've seen, but what have you seen as rabbit hole bedrock? Excuse me, I didn't hear that, sir. What have you seen as radical bedrock? Is that what you said? Rabbit hole bedrock. Give me a little bit more information. What is your radical bedrock? He says he knows what you've no, seen. No, no, no. Uh, like the bottom of the rabbit hole. Oh, rabbit that's what I just said. Bedrock. What is the bottom of the rabbit hole? Oh, man, it goes way, 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 All we way know is deep. it's anti-human and it's and, old and, and, and it ain't and, nice. And, and, and we just need to keep going deeper. It's because, the devil. It's the devil. You know, if you pick a flower off the plant, uh, off the weed, the root will still, we have to pull it out by the roots. And we need to find out who is behind the Illuminati. That's, that's where, what your book gets that's, into. That's what it's and about. And who is behind it? It ain't of this world. It's not uh, God of this world. It ain't of this world. It is other than sentient human beings, sentient terrestrial human beings. And we well, just, I'll say this. The elite believe they're getting off, off world knowledge. Absolutely. They believe that. And, 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 and. Thought and conscious manifestation, whether it is actually true or not actually true. And so what you're saying is we it. have to get from Christ divine technology yeah. to beat them. Christ is the universal energy, and we have to be who we are, but we also have to understand that there is an energy on this planet called the archons, called the black goo, whatever you want to call it, that wants to Well, you talked about chaos. earlier, like the Muslims do counterclockwise around that meteorite. It's satanic. I mean, this well, is it, you know. I have many friends who are Islamic who are great people, but the fact is every day they walk counterclockwise around a black cube that some people call the cube of Saturn or, or, or satanic. And it is black goo. It is exactly what the Nag Hammadi talked about with the Essenes and the Nazarenes. And, and Jesus was a Nazarene. Folks, this is insanity. It's ins and I'm not just going after Islamic people. All of the Occidental religions have their problems. Point is, they're worshiping a black meteorite. Yep. And, I mean, and, they're going and, counterclockwise. And, hey, we got hey, a problem hey, here. Ask yourself where they're on the opposite direction of the ask planet. Ask yourself <laughs> where did the company Google get its name from? Goo, black goo. 
Look at the last Hunger Games, the black goo. For 50 years in every one of the horror movies, there is this black goo that is there. This stuff's been around. That We've known about this for 4,000 years. There is a reason there is so much insanity on this planet, but it is up to us to heal it. And the poor Muslims are like sitting all around it. Yep. Oh, my God. We've gone to the next level here today. I apologize to callers. Thank you, Wild. Uh, I don't think we have time to go any more calls. I got to play this Putin clip. We're going to break here. Uh, we're going to break here in just a few minutes. Uh, uh, look, all I know is I believe in Christ and I'm exposing evil. And the Black Lives Matter is run by Obama and the globalists to create civil war in this country. And and, and they're like, well, a cop got shot in Georgia or a cop got shot in Tennessee. Well, the cops need to reform themselves. That's why the cop got shot in the back of the head. It's like what? That is the most, it's like if like, it was some black racist, let's just go kill some bl random black person. What is that? No, that's evil. That's evil. And I stand against that. We're going to come back with this incredibly important Vladimir Putin piece. And I'll have some final words at the end of it, dealing with World War III. I'm not saying Putin's perfect. I'm just saying if Putin's talking about World War III, we should be discussing it. It should be known. So I'm going to air this right here. George Humphrey, we'll see you Tuesday. Thank you. I cannot help asking those who have caused this situation, do you realize now what you've done? Speaking nearly a month ago, President Vladimir Putin at the International Economic Forum in St. Petersburg, Russia, warned the group of international journalists there repeatedly that Europe, the United States, and Russia were drifting towards full-scale war. We know year by year what's going to happen, and they know we know. It's only you that they tell these fables and you buy it and spread it to the citizens of your countries. Your people do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled in an irreversible direction? That is the problem. But they pretend like nothing's going on. Uh, I don't even know how to get through to you people anymore. And the big news is, a month later, almost a month later, after we first reported on it, in mid-June, there has been almost no Western coverage of it at all. And that's exactly what Putin was getting at. Whether you love Putin or hate Putin, if the leader of Russia, with thousands of intercontinental ballistic missiles and cruise missiles, is telling the West, I don't know how to get through to you, your media is controlled, you're being manipulated, NATO is putting missiles on our borders. We're having to move missiles in. You've overthrown Ukraine. You're on an offensive. You're funding and protecting radical Islam. Do you know what you've done? Do you know what you've done? As he said at the UN, destabilizing the Middle East. Why are you doing this? Where are the sound minds across the political spectrum who should be stopping this? Russia has three overseas military bases you have hundreds you have your spies inside our country trying to overthrow it you have your cia people trying to get into our embassies you are at war with us and the average american the average european the average brit is not aware of this another threat that president obama mentioned was isis well, who on earth armed them? Who helped to arm the Syrians that were fighting against Assad? Who created the necessary political climate that facilitated the situation? Who pushed for the delivery of arms to the area? Do you really not understand as to who is fighting in Syria? But the issue of a major world leader saying that we're moving to the brink of war and it's not in our news, that's the big story. It shows how incredibly controlled things are. Deutsche Bank, one of the biggest banks in the world, is plunging right now, much bigger than Lehman Brothers. If it continues, it'll make 2008 look tame in comparison. Elites are building armored fortresses and redoubts all over the world, admitting they believe collapse is coming. Governments are digging in. Russia is digging in. 
uh, our supposed government is collapsing our borders and bringing people in with diseases and ignoring the Supreme Court rulings. It seems an age of madness or megalomania is now upon us. We've seen great evil out of Russia. We've seen great evil out of Germany. We've seen incredible evil out of communist China. But America has had its problems as well. And now we see Europe and the United States and the whole Anglo-American establishment filled with hubris and arrogance, just violating domestic laws, persecuting the press, uh, leaking classified material and getting away with it. This is the stuff that collapses and major wars and calamities are made of. And most historians point out the parallels between the start of World War I and what we now see happening today. And the parallels with the start of World War II and the climate politically we see today. Even the Pentagon admits that we're probably witnessing one of the most unstable periods in human history right now. But Obama says, we've got the best economy ever and the world's the most stable it's ever been as they do everything they can to push us into crisis. And it's not just the Democrats. They have their establishment Republican cohorts that are working with them. I have never been more concerned about what's happening on the planet today. And if we're able to raise the alarm, you the freedom lovers out there, the, the people that want to have a civilization, the people that don't want to have war, if we're able to come together, whether we be black, white, old, young, conservative, libertarian, Catholic, Muslim, whatever it is, we cannot continue to have these conflicts. We cannot continue to have this globalist crisis brand where they stir up the problems, exacerbate the crises, and then gain power out of it. Because all the money in the world is going to be worthless if we have a major nuclear war. And that's what the Russian foreign minister and many others say we're going towards. And Putin is now begging with the press to trigger some type of debate and, and, and saying, I can't believe how none of this gets through to the people of the West. Please spread this video far and wide and hopefully it will spur a debate that can cause some type of chain reaction that reverses our course or at least changes our course from assured Armageddon. 20 years ago, I would interview people like Nigel Farage, the head of UKIP, when they had a couple members of the British Parliament and a couple members of the EU Parliament. Now it's the fastest growing party in Europe. They just had the British exit, the Brexit successfully. Nationalism and anti-globalism is rising. I have seen the power of the people when we take action. And sure, our elites are decadent. Sure, they're inbred. Sure, they're very, very narcissistic and disconnected. But they will pay attention when we, the people, force the issue. And we are forcing the issue on this, as well as many other issues going on here in the United States and around the world. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. If you're watching or listening to this transmission, you are the hope. You are the resistance. All right, we're almost out of time. We've got a three minutes left before the Sunday broadcast ends. I'll be back again, God willing. I don't take anything for granted. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. for four hours, Central InfoWars.com forward slash show for people that don't have local affiliates or some affiliates don't carry the weekday show. Um, but regardless, spread the word about the transmission because you see the censorship, you see the attempts to bring in control. It's because the globalists can't deal with real renaissance, real liberalism. That's private property. Keep more of your money. Have more guns. Have more free association. Liberal means more, not less, not controlling the language. I want to say bye to my friend George Humphrey. He'll be back with us in Studio Tuesday. But finally... Um, we're self-funded, and it's because of you we've been able to do all this. You see our reporters all over the world, all over the country, just cutting edge, breaking major news, uh, derailing New World Order operations. We're running huge specials, not just the 10% off for anybody that signs up for auto ship, for vitamins or minerals or other supplements, uh, not just uh, free shipping on orders of $50 or more, but 40% off on storable foods ends tomorrow at InfoWars. Store.com, super high quality, storable foods, highest quality. 20% off all shortwave and crank radios. 20% off all Alexa Pure and Pro Pure water filtration systems. All the great non-GMO seeds. And 20% off X2, the super high quality halogen, the good halogen, uh, the good iodine, and a bunch of other nutraceuticals. And 10% off all nutraceuticals, InfoWorksLife.com. That ends tomorrow. So take advantage of that. And the profit we do make... 
goes to send myself and like seven or eight other reporters to the DNC, the RNC, starting not this week, but next week and everything else. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, you've got this commitment. We will not cower in the face of the globals. We will take action. And we find ourselves selling products everybody needs that are game changers for ourselves and others because we're all about win-win. I don't promote something unless I truly have used it and know it's great. It's all about energy. It's all about I wouldn't do something to you. I wouldn't want it to happen to me. And that's why we have Providence. That's why we're so blessed. So I want to support you all and thank you all for your support. we got about 60 seconds left. George Humphrey, you'll be back in studio with us uh, this Tuesday, 20 seconds. Alex, I'm always so honored to be here. And you know why? Because I have fun while I'm here. Because talking about the truth, talking about human potential, talking about justice, and having somebody who has a spine and the courage to say it, I love you, buddy. Well, I love you too, man. I loved like 25 <laughs> years ago on the Pat Buchanan campaign putting signs up around town. I remember that like it was yesterday. I'll see you on Tuesday. You bet, my friend. Now, now, now the book, uh, Life, Love, and Joy by George Humphrey, it's available at Amazon.com. Where else? Amazon.com, Kindle, and maybe at another... Oh, there'll be no maybe. Just come <laughs> and talk to Weldon. We're going to buy yeah, it. I'll okay. sub and sell them. Okay, we got I it love the you. fact you're selling them at cost anyways. Just yeah. get the word out. It's a powerful book. I've just started reading it. You want to find out who's behind the Illuminati, get the book. George Humphrey. All right, we're out of time. Great job to the crew. See you back, Lord willing, tomorrow.